Welcome everybody. This is Cheryl Sleater with the Sleater Group. Welcome to our webinar today, Best Practices. Host all your apps, clients, and data in the cloud. I wanted to share with you um, real quickly, we have some raffle prizes that you probably heard about that we'll be giving away after the webinar today. Uh, one lucky webinar attendee will earn a one-year membership in the Sleater Group Consultants Network. Another attendee will, earn a, uh, will win a $100 Visa gift card. Um, gifted to us by Cloud9 Realtime, and three chances, three webinar attendees will win um, an autographed copy of Robert Chandler of Cloud9 Realtime's book, Together in the Cloud. Again, we'll uh, award those prizes after the webinar, and you must be present for the entire webinar um, in order to be entered into the raffle drawing. Some other great news we have today is our Super Sleeter deal. We have, uh, and through June 7, 27th, um, you can receive 10% off Cloud9 real-time hosting services, uh, plus a copy of Rob's book. So there's information here on this slide, and um, all you have to do is go to this link here, um, which we will email everybody after the webinar, and mention Sleater in the How Did You Hear About Us box, and you'll receive 10% off uh, Cloud9 hosting services. So we'll go ahead and get the webinar started. I'm going to turn up turn over the um, presentation to Doug Sleater. Uh, Doug, are you ready? I am ready, and I will show my screen. Well, welcome, everyone. This is Doug Sleater, and um, we're going to have a, a, a lot of deep dive here on the uh, how to basically take your desktop applications that you're using today, including QuickBooks and all the add-ons, and move them into the cloud and do that in a way that doesn't require retraining of all your staff to uh, um, uh, you know, re re relearn new software. Uh, one thing I'd like to mention is in GoToWebinar, there is a, a questions panel. Uh, if you look in your little, uh, it's called like a control panel that the GoToWebinar looks like. Um, you can uh, see there's a question thing. You can pop that out into a separate area, and then you can just type in your questions. Please be interactive with us throughout this, because I've got a special guest, Casey Johnson, with me today. She's going to be presenting what Cloud9 does, uh, but I'll be monitoring questions, and we would like to kind of uh, interact with you throughout. A little bit about myself. If you don't know the Sleater Group or me, um, I guess I should go ahead and go into presentation mode, which is better. Oops. How about this? No. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, things just don't quite do what you're supposed to do. So uh, there we go. Uh, there, that's a little better. This is a little bit about uh, myself and this leader group. Uh, we have a 700-member accounting software consulting group. Uh, our members, uh, many of them are certified by us and, of course, by Intuit and uh, QuickBooks. So these are ex experts who provide consulting services to small business owners. They also, um, in many cases, do tax returns and those sorts of things. But we're all about the small business. We're all about the business process and helping that business thrive with new technology. Um, we have several books that uh, we have on the market that are training books for QuickBooks, college textbooks, and also reference guides. If you're in the profession, there's a lot of things you're going to want to know about how QuickBooks works that isn't about what's in the manual or what you could read in the manual, but uh, special client situations. So we try to help you there, uh, and we also try to help consultant, we're consultant to software developers. So we take what you're doing in the field and your clients are doing in business, and we help the small business or the uh, developers uh, write and, and create products that, that solve those problems better. I have a column in the CPA Practice Advisor magazine. Uh, you can go there at any time uh, and see, see what I've got going there. Uh, I've been a columnist there for about eight, nine years. So you'll see a lot of my writing there, as well as in our blog, which is sleeter.com slash blog. Um, uh, Cheryl, somebody's saying they can't hear, but I'm pretty sure that's not true. Um, I'll let Nathan handle that. Um, anyway, so then there's accounting today. Uh, we've got uh, I'm in their uh, top 100 most influential people in accounting, which is kind of a nice honor to have. Um, anyway, so as we move towards this uh, co uh, content today, I just I've been using this particular slide for quite a while, 
And uh, what I'm trying to paint with this slide, if you'll just go with me on a little trip to the 30,000 foot level of what is the cloud and why is it important, it has to do with the accountant on the right side there and the client on the left side there and the fact that they're in a collaborative relationship. The accountant is helping the small business with their taxes or with their planning or with their financials or whatever. Um, when we put the data that they're going to work on into some central place where the accountant and the client can both access that data anytime, anywhere, real time, always up to date, we have an immediately uh, better situation for being able to provide services and really help that client work better. So when, and when you take the data and surround that by a piece of software, what you're going to do is actually provide both accountant and client the same access through that same piece of software to that data in the cloud. So this solves a problem that we QuickBooks consultants have had forever where we always had to have different versions of QuickBooks installed on our computers in order to handle any uh, potential client data file that was coming to us. So by centralizing it, we can have one piece of software that I use and the client uses, and that really, again, is another level of, of efficiency. Of course, security is critical. Uh, never forget about security. Uh, during our presentation today, we're going to cover some specifics about security, but Suffice it to say that in, when the data, the red blob there, is in the cloud, it's surrounded one, by one piece of software and a security layer that is more robust than we could possibly create in our own office, uh, then we really actually enhance the overall security of the client data. And it's not only the client data, but it's the client's customer's data. Uh, for example, their credit cards, if they're storing credit cards, which we kind of recommend against anyway, but if they are, we certainly don't want that stored locally in the inside the enterprise. So this is sort of the, the picture of kind of how we're going here. Uh, what it also lends to is it over here is what the clients are going to now do once the data is in the cloud and the accountant can now do once the data is, is in the cloud. What I mean by do is just like before we could get the centralized data, the accountant couldn't really do bookkeeping, or at least not profitably so, uh, because you would have to trade the file back and forth and run it back across town or whatever it was. Um, and uh, so, so we can actually consider the concept of outsourced bookkeeping services again. And this is huge. This is a whole new business opportunity for the accounting professionals uh, to go back into. Of course, you know. 20, 30 years ago, that's kind of where, where the accounting profession was, but we, we, we've kind of lost that part of the profession because everybody was using QuickBooks in their own offices. Of course, to be fair, they were also creating messes in the data file that the accountant has to end up cleaning up. So this is much better because the accountant can actually help throughout the year to keep the data accurate as it's going into the accounting system. And it also, over here on the client side, it, it, it lets the clients go back to managing their operations as opposed to doing books. So we think overall this is just a, a much better architectural look at how we do the client and the accounting services. All right, so now what about hosting? Um, there are several different ways to go about using the cloud, but we're going to talk today about hosting. Um, so what hosting means, and we're going to have some slides later by Casey's going to put some up, some more specifics, but it really means that we're going to take what you have on your desktop, your QuickBooks, your add-ons, even your Outlook, even all of your Excel, Word, Microsoft Office, and, and associated uh, Windows applications, and you're going to actually put those on a server in the cloud. And uh, so we're going to get back to, you know, specifics about what that is, but just imagine you're You've got this really long wire over the cloud, and you're just simply using a desktop up there. And what this says is I, I can, by, by doing this, I, I don't have to convert my data. I basically upload it and start using it. Uh, no training of the users is needed because they already know QuickBooks and all the apps, and they know how to use Windows. Uh, they can keep local data backups of their QuickBooks files by using hosting. Um, and there's a lot of software that you already are using that you can just basically host up in the cloud as opposed to uh, replacing with cloud apps. 
Um, and then, of course, there's no, um, uh, no uh, preventing you from also using other SaaS or cloud-based solutions that aren't specifically Windows stuff. You would just have an internet connection from your hosted desktop in the cloud that connects up to your cloud services. Uh, let's pretend you're using Smart Vault, which is a SaaS document management solution in the cloud, and you're using Qu QuickBooks. Well, you, your QuickBooks moved up to a hosting company, and you're still using the cloud-based other services like Smart Vault or Bill.com is another uh, favorite example of mine. Uh, so there's no preventing you from doing that. Um, and of course, one of the things I like about hosting is, you know, maybe it's a negative, but I, if I don't like them, I can just just take my data back to my desktop and keep going. Uh, that actually is one of those things that if you're having trouble as an accounting professional or a consultant, convincing your client they should go to the cloud. This is actually a hidden little uh, nugget, you could say. Hey, we can try it out for a couple months. If we don't like it, bring our data back and we'll be just where no, no different from where we were because we didn't uh, translate any of the data or convert any of the data. So then there's another concept of hosting. Should you do it yourself? Um, and what I mean by that is some accounting firms have found, hey, we've got smart techies in the, in the back office here. We can go build uh, Windows servers and provide an internet connection to it. Why don't I just do that and then uh, I don't need a hosting company? My short answer, don't do that. Uh, the reason is because hosting is actually pretty hard. Uh, it, it, it involves the several levels of security and, and uh, facilities issues, physical facility stuff like locking doors and eyeball scanners and things like that. But it also involves quite a bit of technical uh, uh, knowledge and, and, and infrastructure to continue to make things work. So I won't go deep on that, but I just I want to, although it's possible to ho host yourself, I want to kind of wave you off because I think it it's more like, you know, focus on your core co competency and be a consultant or be a, an accounting firm, but don't be a hosting company because if you try to do both, then maybe you're less of both. <coughs> so that's my uh, kind of I idea on hosting. Now, when you, if you've got QuickBooks clients and you're going to put them to a hosting place, um, the question might come, well, then do they also have to have a license to QuickBooks? And the answer is yes. Uh, and they can transfer that license up with the QuickBooks as we go to the cloud. Or we could license more software directly up with the hosting providers. Uh, on a sort of a subscription or rental kind of basis. So you're essentially renting access to the computer and renting access to the software up in the cloud. And this really allows you to kind of go month by month as opposed to updating your, uh, your software every year and installing it yourself. Uh, all the installations of these things are done by the hosting provider and uh, that uh, really saves your IT infrastructure work and you also then have the licensing through the hosting company. So that's sort of the highest level stuff. Let me get uh, the next thing here. Let me go to uh, bring Casey in. Um, Casey Johnson is with Cloud9 Real Time, uh, and I'm going to make you a presenter. Are you here, Casey? I am. Thank you. You are. OK. And can you see my screen now, Doug? There you are. Yep. Perfect. Uh, so yes, my name is Casey Johnson. I'm the Executive Vice President at Cloud9 Realtime, and I'd just like to thank both Doug and Cheryl for having uh, me on today to share kind of what the hosted model looks like. A little bit about Cloud9 Realtime, we are a U.S.-based company with headquarters in San Diego, California. We're licensed by both Intuit as well as Sage as commercial hosts in the United States as well as Canada. Uh, we deploy all of our servers at SOC 2 SSAE 16 certified data centers. So it is equipment that we own. We're not like leasing space off of an AWS or, or similar service. Um, we've recently won a few awards, and I think that it's uh, basically because we've changed our technology so much that it does not rely on connection managers, which is so different than other hosting providers. And we build custom cloud solutions for each individual client. So um, I think that's why in the last few years we've, we've won some of the awards that we have. Uh, but we have been building cloud solutions since 2000. Uh, 
and uh, we will be distributing a free white paper for um, specialized cloud on built for accounting professionals to all attendees of today's webinar. Uh, Sleeter members also receive the 10% off and then the signed copy of the book. Um, but this is just some general information about Cloud9. Uh, Doug has kind of already gone over what the cloud computing is going to offer and what the hosted model looks like um, to just kind of touch on a few of the most important parts of uh, what it is that we're doing. First of all, I like to kind of explain a lot of people get a, a little confused by what exactly is the cloud. Um, cloud is really just being used as a metaphor for the Internet. It's nothing fancy. It's been around for a long time. Uh, your virtual machines are kept at a data center that are then managed by your hosting provider. It's a highly scalable environment, so you don't have to uh, purchase a large infrastructure in advance. Instead, you can increase capacity quickly. Uh, the users don't need to have control or um, update their cloud. That's what the managed service provider is for. It allows you to save a lot on licensing fees. And the nice thing about the hosted model is that there's no learning curve for your common business applications because that's exactly what we're hosting are the apps you're already using today. Uh, so I don't know, Doug, if you want to kind of expand on exactly what the cloud is made of, but I like for people to understand that it's nothing new. I know it's being pushed out to everybody as small to medium-sized business owners right now um, because the costs have come down so much so that now they can afford the benefits of it, but maybe you want to expand a little bit on what the cloud oh. is made of. Well, yeah, the, this and the, the next couple slides is basically – uh, as Casey said, uh, people have been doing this, people meaning large companies, have been doing things in the cloud for years and years and years. If you use online banking, you're already using the cloud. Um, but there are different types of cloud apps. Um, and this, this graph here is basically kind of trying to say, you know, you've got servers up there, you've got storage, meaning just basically disk spaces. You've got applications running on either servers or, yeah, they're running on the servers. Uh, and different network appliances. So if you go to the next slide, let's just talk about what we mean by uh, different solutions. Um, again, some of this is a little repeat, but I, I saw in the question bank there are some, some confusions here. So hosting, uh, and Casey met, uh, refers to this as managed service providers. You might hear that term. It's the same. These are hosting companies. Cloud9 is one of them. They provide virtual servers that host all of your apps data and your users, if you will. That means you, you have multiple users in your firm right now using QuickBooks. You'll have a different user login to this cloud Windows machine. Um, that's what hosting is. Online access, so logging in via brow browser or uh, to, to view things. So this is uh, online banking. This is a SaaS kind of product, basically. This and the, the last one, last big bullet there, SaaS software as a service. Online access is, is just kind of a, a way of talking about you only access certain applications by going to Windows Explorer, uh, excuse me, Internet Explorer or Chrome or something like that and logging in like you do with online banking. If you wanted, you couldn't uh, get your online banking application software downloaded to your PC. You only use the browser to get to it. Uh, then there's other sort of storage kind of things like Box.net or um, Dropbox or whatever. This is a place where you can just uh, 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 upload so uh, data files and store them online. Or maybe in the accounting firm uh, concept, you might want to have a portal. We call it portal. It's just the same kind of thought where our clients could upload their documentation for us as opposed to bring us, bringing us a shoebox. But of course, once you get a portal, then it's just this web place where we can put, the client can put their source data up to, the accountant can put their completed financial statements, tax returns, et cetera, onto that as a delivery platform of the, uh, the provided services, if you will, back to the clients. So this, you know, the cloud gets kind of uh, involved when you just say cloud, which is important for you to, uh, understand the nuanced difference. The most important one here today is the top one. Hosting is specific because it means your Windows applications are in the cloud. The others are just various plays on uh, applications in the cloud that do various types of things. 
Okay, go ahead. Great explanation. Thank you, Doug. So uh, again, the hosted model is going to be putting up all of your desktop applications into the cloud. So basically what we are building is a custom virtual server installing your applications that you need access to, creating the different user permissions for not only the accountants but also the business owners as well as any employees that need access to the different data files or applications. And then we integrate with whatever SaaS products you may be using like a, a bill.com or Smartbox. Uh, this way you have a single portal to log into and access all of your data and applications. Uh, since this is a best practices webinar, I'd kind of like to go over a few things that are our recommended best practices, and Doug, feel free to add any that maybe I forgot. Um, first of all, of course, the, the cloud is going to allow you to avoid the high upfront cost, which this is going to be not only for hardware, physical servers, but also some of the licensing, like the Windows Server licenses, SQL licenses, Office licenses, and of course, PDF program licenses. Um, I recommend that you learn from early adopters. So these are really the thought leaders in the industry that are out there telling you, because they've probably been in the cloud for a lot longer, what they've learned from it, what they experienced, and what they recommend that you do differently. So I know there's a lot of publications out there about these things. Definitely learn from the early adopters so that you don't waste your time making the same mistakes. Um, I recommend that you always go with a vetted certified cloud provider. And what I mean by this is that because the cloud is becoming such a buzzword, we're seeing more and more local IT firms that are popping up with cloud services. The problem with that is that while these are great IT firms that are used to on-site uh, local infrastructures, providing them over the internet and supporting all of these different applications is much different. Uh, so definitely check out how long they've been doing this, how much experience they have, and for what type of industries, because all the applications are so different, especially in the accounting world where you have tax, time and billing, CRM systems, um, auditing software, so many different types of applications. So definitely check out how long that they've actually been working with cloud solutions. Uh, SAS 70 is the old certification. We get asked all the time about our SAS 70 report. The AICPA actually replaced that with the SOC 2 report. I believe that that was in December of 2011, so now you're going to go, want to be looking for SOC 2 um, as the standard by the AICPA. Address all of your security concerns prior to buying, and the reason I say this is it's the most common question. You do have extremely sensitive data that you will be storing up there, so make a list of all of your security concerns and bring those to any providers that you are looking at during your due diligence uh, questioning. Try before you buy. The reason that I recommend this is because all platforms are just a little bit different. Yes, there's lots of posting providers out there, and we all offer free trials. So why not try it before you buy it and make sure that it's a good fit for your firm? Uh, in looking at different solutions, whether these are SaaS products or desktop products or hosted solutions, look to solve the integration problem. And this goes along with the next one, which is singular sign-on. And what I mean by this is that one of the ways that Cloud9 is different is that we host over 400 applications right now. And we integrate with all of the different SaaS applications that are compatible with our network. So because we've opened it up so much and built a custom solution, you don't have to go to multiple different portals to log in to get into all of your different apps. So you don't have to have a vendor that hosts your Thomson Reuters suite and another vendor that hosts your QuickBooks and then yet another vendor that hosts your other uh, proprietary softwares. You want to find a vendor that will be able to solve that integration problem and make it simple to sign on. Uh, dual monitor functionality. This is really important just because most of my clients are on three, four monitors or more. Uh, connection managers can really limit the seamless multiple windows. Uh, so make sure that you find out about any type of connection managers. Like I said, we've been connection manager free for two years uh, this month, actually. So it made it a much more seamless environment for uh, multiple monitors. But you're going to want to test that out or at least find out about any kind of limitations with dual monitors. Backups, this is your disaster recovery. So definitely find out how often they're done, how long that they are kept from any provider that you look at. Uh, check your own connectivity. This is definitely a best practice that you want to look at because working in the cloud, you're going to be very reliant upon your local internet service. 
Uh, there's a lot of free services out there that will allow you to check your local internet connection. And a lot of times we find that our clients are paying for one thing, but receiving something much different. So if, if you want any of those uh, kind of tests, just let us know. We'll send you links and you can test out your own internet connection. Yeah, Casey, uh, I, want, uh, sorry, I want to put something in there too. Um, the internet connection, some of the uh, big resistance your clients will have and maybe people within your firm will have about doing something like this in the cloud is, well, you know, it's going to be slow and, and I need super fast uh, machines. And my personal experience was, uh, my, my personal assumption before going to the cloud was that it, it would be, in fact, quite a bit slower. My personal experience after doing it was it actually improved our overall speed. And that is a lot because, especially at Cloud9, who, which is who we uh, are hosted with here at the Cedar Group, they build machines in the cloud that are so much more powerful than what you're going to ever build in your own office. Uh, and so, so the machines themselves are running very quickly. So then it comes down to the pipeline, which is what you were just talking about, Casey. That pipeline between the client's office and the, you know, the, the Cloud9 data centers. That's an internet connection and nobody you know, specifically controls all of the pieces there. So it is important to find out what your connect connectivity speeds are and, and Casey, you're saying your technical people can help them do that analysis? Absolutely. There's three that we really look at and recommend. It's a trace route, a ping test, and then just kind of a letter grade on your own speed. Um, so definitely we can give those to you. They're all free and it will kind of tell us if there's any recommendations we need to, to let you know because you know, our, our minimum system requirement is pretty low. It's only three megs um, for your download speed. However, if you have a lot of people in your office, you need to take that into consideration because now they're all sharing the same pipe. So uh, cloud planning, this is another thing in terms of best practices. Risk assessment, again, doing your due diligence of looking at any cloud provider that you are considering um, moving your data to or your applications with. Consider your data migration. So it depends on how much data you have of what that data migration is going to look like. Uh, for us as Cloud9, if you have less than 100 gigabytes of data, then when we do your virtual server launch and training, we will schedule out with you to migrate that data over the Internet. If you have over 100 gigabytes of data, which we have some clients that come to us with 6 to 8 terabytes of data, it's not going to be transferred over the Internet. So we need to plan for that data migration where you'll actually send us a NAS or a USB or a hard drive. And of course, then you're not going to want two different live data sets. So you're going to need to plan for, for that type of data migration if you have a lot of data. Local security, you are still going to need to have a local uh, firewall to ensure that what your users are doing um, and where they're going if you haven't locked down their workstations and that they have healthy web browsing habits uh, to ensure that you are still secure with your local internet and PC. Um, even though nothing is installed and running locally, they're still able to connect to the Internet and you don't want them to download anything into your local system. Uh, you need to consider about what you need locally. We do have some very large firms that still keep a local domain controller because, like I said, they want to lock them down locally. Uh, implement strong ongoing governance of the user um, healthy browsing habits as well as how they're going to use the cloud, what's in the cloud, what's kept locally. These are all business decisions for you to make, but things to definitely plan ahead on. Assign a project lead. The reason that I, I recommend this is we have found that this really works the best when one person is kind of in charge for the firm of the project and then reports back to all of the members of what is going on instead of uh, anybody having any confusion. Now, with Cloud9, we have two different environments, and I just kind of like to explain a little bit about the two, and then I'm going to go into what it actually looks like for the user experience. Now, most environments out there, and the reason why you would find the limitations as to what you can host and what products it integrates with is because it's only a shared environment. So they're only hosting either their own applications or a set list of applications. And we do have an environment like this, and it's really just for users that are less than um, you know, six users, just needing QuickBooks, uh, maybe Sage 50, United States edition only on our shared, Bill.com, Smart Vault, Spring Ahead, Word, and Excel. It's a very structured cookie cutter environment, so you don't have all the freedom and flexibility of our private virtual servers. 
Now it of course still includes all technical support, the backups, the storage, a self-service help desk, and private labeling, but it doesn't include the third-party application hosting. And that's where we go into kind of our flagship product, our virtual server. This is really where we won our awards, and this is what I think is where um, most firms are really moving towards. Now, with a private virtual server, you have the same freedom and flexibility you would have if it was local in terms that it's a server that's built just for your firm with your users, your applications, and your data. You have your own IP address, your own amount of processors, your own RAM, your own hard drive space. So we're not limiting you in terms of what you can host. Now, because it does have the, the custom-built servers, what we will do is ask you for a scope of the project. How many users? What applications do you need hosted? How much data? Uh, there are bulk license discounts for the virtual servers when you have 10 or more users. We buy the Windows Server licensing for you, any SQL licenses needed, Office, as well as a PDF Reader Writer Pro. If you need Exchange hosting, that's also available. And it gives you a true cloud experience by integrating with any of your SaaS products. So this is um, the kind of the fully hosted environment that we were talking about. And let me insert here. Um it's an important thing for you to consider if you're going to if you haven't already been doing any hosting with your clients uh, it's an important thing for you to consider between the shared environment and the virtual server environment they're really similar but significantly different similar in that they both provide you access to quickbooks up in the cloud right so that's cool but different in the sense that as a firm you can think of it as basically i own the whole server up there I mean, I can install whatever I want up there, and I can log into the desktop, and I can do everything I want to up there, as opposed to sharing that with a lot of others where there would be a, a performance degradation, there would be basically variable results. So if you're serious about this, I just say go with the virtual server. It is more expensive, yes, but it is totally worth it. I just don't want you to go down the path of toe in the water, cheap, Go, go on the cheap and then find out that you didn't get what you thought it, that you wanted out of it. So um, I, I went the expensive route, and I, I think that's where you're going to want to go. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, now, in terms of what the user experience looks like in logging in, you can access the cloud from any device with Internet connectivity. So it's not limited to, even though we're a Windows-based environment, you still can work on a Mac. Uh, we don't host the Mac version of QuickBooks, but we, we are Mac compatible. You can also access via a tablet, an iPad, a smartphone, and, um, any of those types of devices you can access from your laptop or your local PC. Now, we, again, do not cookie cutter anything. They're custom built solutions. So you actually have three ways that you can log in to the system for all of your users, and we let you decide which one is the best fit for your firm. The one that we most commonly recommend and we get the best feedback from our users is the desktop icon which we call an MSI, Microsoft Installer. And what it does is, and you see this little screenshot of one of our clients where it installed on their local computer under their start menu, it says their accounting group name, HDA Accounting Group, and it shows all the applications available to that user in the cloud. Then it says cloud files, that's their map server drive. So what they do when they come in in the morning is they just launch their, their computer, they click on the start menu, and they click on whichever application that they want to launch in the cloud or their map server drive. They can set it to remember their username and password, so this way they aren't having to open up a browser, and the applications are actually being streamed directly to their PC. They can up, open up so many different applications and spread them across up to 16 monitors and seamlessly. So this is really kind of the preferred method uh, of login. The other way to log in is through a web browser. And this would be where somebody opens up Internet Explorer. We can give you embedded code to put directly on your website so that then if you are doing QuickBooks hosting for your clients, you're, you're pushing them to your website, which in turn increases your own SEO and brands you, creates a community for your clients. And then when they log in, they will see a screen similar to this where each user, again, has customized access. They only see the application files and folders that you've given them access to. But they would simply launch through the web browser which application they wanted to host, to, excuse me, launch that we were hosting for you. 
Now, if you were on a, let's say you normally use the desktop icon, but you were on a hotel computer or a family member's computer when you're on um, a vacation, this would be the way that you would log in instead of installing a Microsoft installer on somebody else's computer. So you would just open up a web browser, either come to our website to log in or your own if you've embedded that code, and then you're able to launch any of your applications. Uh, we do have a privately labeled portal, or what we call our e-dashboard. This is uh, not, not only solving the private label feature and giving access to all of your applications, but it's also giving you a full document management storage system for your clients. It does allow your users to launch the full desktop version of QuickBooks with a single click, as well as access any third-party applications they may be using. So it's not the QuickBooks Online Edition, it is the full desktop edition, whether that be Enterprise, Premier, Pro, POS, it is the full desktop version, just in a multi-user environment so that everybody can work in the same files at the same time. Finally, the last way to kind of log in would be a RDP session, and this is where you're actually working directly on a Windows desktop. Each user has their own customized access, they can create shortcuts on their desktop, and it's basically just a Windows-friendly user desktop that there is no learning curve on, so a lot of people like it this way. I still prefer the MSI, but some people want this with their individual users with customized access uh, and, of course, seeing all of their applications in one start menu um, in a Windows desktop. So this is definitely an option if you prefer this way. If you are a Mac user or on an iPad, a tablet, something like that, this is going to be more of what your experience is like. So security, we promised that we would discuss security and answer any questions that you may have on it. Uh, I'll just kind of go through the main bullet points and show you some different pictures of our data center facility. First, of course, we launch all of our uh, servers at a SOC 2 SSAE 16 data center. We co-locate to um, a large infrastructure that actually has five different locations for redundancy. We have uh, logging in through 256-bit encryption and do automatic offsite backups nightly. Now, you can increase how many times, what the frequency is of your backups, as well as how long that they are kept, but our standard on backups is nightly with 30 days rolling, so you always have a minimum of 30 days of backups. You can increase that to be done every hour, every 12 hours, whatever kind of frequency you want, as well as keep being kept. We have some for a year, we have some up to seven years, so it really just depends on what you're looking for. Um, uninterrupted power supply is very, very important. Uh, we have contracts with two different diesel companies to keep those generators constantly fueled so that if anything was happening in the geographic area of our data center, our users, no matter where they are across the globe, are not going to be affected. We do mirror disk imaging, and what that means is we are not only backing up the individual files on the server, we're actually backing up the full server itself. So if a virtual machine were, ever, were to ever get corrupted, we could actually just pull the last backup and the server's up within 20 minutes. Now, if your local server were to have a hard drive fail or something go bad on it and you, you had to have your local IT guy rebuild your server, it's going to take days, if not weeks. So it's a much faster um, backup and getting you back up and running with the redundancy built in there. RAID implementation, 24-7 on-site monitoring, and of course, N plus 1 or 2 and redundancy on all systems. Uh, and these are just some pictures of our data center. The top picture is of the generator room. This is what's giving us that uninterrupted power supply. The bottom picture is of the fire suppression and cooling systems, which will keep all of our servers at optimal temperatures. And then finally, our NOC. And this is where we're just watching 24-7 anything going on within our network and at the data center level. So this would be any IP addresses coming into the system. We can turn off an individual computer as well as an entire country. Uh, inclement weather, any type of things like that. And Doug, I think that you actually toured our data center recently. Um, maybe you want to expand on kind of what is created to give the users the security. Yes, I did. And um, it's it, these pictures are kind of uh, appropriate because that's you get in and you realize how much goes on in order to make these machines uh, perform like they do and then be there 24-7. And if there is a problem, the quick the, the speed with which they resolve the issues. So um, very impressive security uh, around the, the facility. Uh, you can't get in without turning your license in, a uh, thumbprint or something like that, and be, couple door locks be, be, 
that you have to go through. So it's very impressive both physically and then sort of professionally. You can just tell these guys know what they're doing. And this is not Cloud9 per se. It's a data center that Cloud9 hosts at. And this data center hosts things like um, cities, uh, water departments, uh, you know, big, big problem uh, or complex uh, systems uh, beyond what Cloud9 is doing. But Cloud9 has a whole cage, if you will, um, kind of like that top left picture. There's a cage that has all the Cloud9 equipment in it. So you can kind of see it and their techies can go in there. Only certain techies can get in though, not everybody. It's very, very tight. And they go in to do the wiring or whatever they need for their servers. So it's very impressive. Thank you, Doug. So I see a lot of people posting different questions about applications, how they run, and if things are compatible. Again, we host over 400 applications. And because it's your own custom-built server, we don't limit you on what you can host. So that list grows daily. Uh, you basically have two questions that you need to ask yourself in terms of if an application can be hosted in the cloud. That's number one, to be compatible with our environment, which is Windows Server 2008 R2. And number two would be if you have the proper licensing. Uh, for example, Thomson Reuters, we host their entire suite, but you have to have the terminal server license for us to host their products. So you're just going to want to look at those two questions in terms of if we can host an application. We do, of course, host all of the different versions and years of QuickBooks that Intuit currently supports. So that would be Premier, Pro, Enterprise, POS, uh, all the industry-specific editions like manufacturing, construction, nonprofit. We deploy, of course, the Office Suite, the full CCH Suite, and lots of other products here. I'm not going to go through them all because there's so many, but if you have interest in an application, you can go to our website. We actually list out um, over 400 applications on it and update it monthly. Or you can submit to ask a question about if an application would be compatible. But lots of different options here. The time and money savings is really why we see accountants move to the cloud. It gives them instant access to financials, which then turns around a faster turnaround time for their client. The accountant and the client can work in the same files at the same time. Uh, I see some questions being asked about how many users can be in a file. We're not changing the way that QuickBooks works. So QuickBooks Premier, you know, that's going to allow up to five people in the same file at the same time. We can't change the way that works. We are simply hosting it and giving you the anytime, anywhere access, keeping it updated, and performing the backups. Uh, if you were in QuickBooks Enterprise, you can have up to, I believe, 30 users in the same file at the same time. So we're not changing the actual functionality of the application. We're just changing where it's stored and how it's accessed. Uh, another benefit is no more accountant's copies or creating backups. Uh, we are now you know, providing you the anytime, anywhere access, and everybody's logging in the same way and working in the same files at the same time. It allows you to stop sending documents back and forth, as well as decrease IT and not have so much local PC maintenance. In summary, um, first of all, reduce cost. Cloud technology is paid incrementally. That means it saves the organization money from a large investment in infrastructure. It's state-of-the-art IT infrastructure with 24-7, 365 days a year of hands-on service that gives better security and compliance with continuous monitoring, which results in improved reliability, performance, and productivity. Disaster recovery, because it's giving you automatic off-site backups, it removes the liability from you as well as ensures the backups have integrity and stored remotely. There is no application learning curve in a hosted environment because you're using the same applications you use today, full desktop versions. They're just now stored and running in the cloud versus locally where you have to manage. This allows you to shift the focus from IT back to billable hours and gives you mobility because you can access from any device with internet connection anywhere. A uh, few vendor questions to ask, and I do see a few people asking if they can get copies of these slides. Absolutely. Uh, we are going to be sending out the free white paper, and if you would like a copy of any of the slides, just let us know, and we'll be happy to send those over. But these are just kind of vendor questions to ask. Of course, where the data is being stored, if they are an authorized QuickBooks commercial host, otherwise you're breaking your user agreement that you, when you purchase QuickBooks as well as they are. The SLA, very, very important. This is their service level agreement. It will tell you what that provider, whether they're SaaS, hosting, whatever type of cloud provider, is guaranteeing you in terms of backups, updates, as well as uptime. 
So we guarantee five nines, 99.999 percent uptime. Uh, very, very important. Hours of support. If private labeling is an issue to you or a concern or you want to be able to offer that if it's available, any type of storage fees because these can rack up very quickly. Restriction of applications. Uh, this is because many hosting providers out there have just a set list of what they will host. They're not building you a custom virtual server. They're giving maybe VDI, virtual desktop images, on a shared environment. So you do have more of a cookie cutter environment. Server administration, license fees, of course, we talked about multiple monitors, and mobile device compatibility. Definitely all things to ask when looking at cloud providers. We have a big cloud summit coming up, and I'd like to invite everybody to come out. We'll have Doug Sweeter as one of our keynote speakers. It is August 14th through the 16th on a private 44-acre island in San Diego, California. We'll actually be giving a data center tour of the facility you saw pictures of today. And it's 18 CPE credits available, great event to attend, so we invite everybody out for that. It's cloudsummit2013.com. And I would just kind of like to turn it over to Doug. Maybe he has some questions he wants to answer and uh, kind of repeat the super sleeter deal for the month. Great. Well, thanks, Casey. We've got a lot of questions to um, take, so I'll be um, doing two things here. I'll be going through the questions, and I'm going to do some uh, polls that I would like people to kind of answer, kind of uh, give, give us a feel for where you are. Um, I just want to note that on you, we, you can see on the screen there is uh, Cloud9 is offering a 10% discount um, for uh, people here, uh, available to everyone through June 27th of 2013. So, uh, Casey, uh, you want them to contact that email ad address right there, right? The uh, info at or sales at cloud9realtime.com both work. Or the, actually it's that that uh, URL, right? Sign up today, that red one now? Yeah, bottom. if they'd like to do a free trial, it's the cloud9realtime.com uh, backslash free seven-day trial. If you just go to cloud9realtime.com, there's lots of offers there to, to get a free trial and, and test it out for free. I, again, I highly recommend that you try before you buy. Make sure it's a good fit for your firm. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to put a poll up. I would like everybody to just uh, give me uh, their answer to this piece. And you see, Casey, you see that poll on the screen, right? Um, I don't. I think. Do I need to put the presenter back to you? Oh, it must be because it's me. I, I have to probably do this. So there if you, you could, um, yeah, so everybody sees the poll, and I see people are voting, if you will. So I just want to know, do you use a hosting service today, yes or no? I'm going to leave that for, up for a little bit. I've got several questions that are coming out. Um, there, um, do you recommend redundant internet connections from Janine? Janine, yes, uh, we totally do. Uh, it's expensive. Uh, you should have your main one that is where you're going to pull down your internet, but if you have VOIP and you have uh, an internet connection and a uh, lot of users going on. Redundant is, is really important if, if daily, uh, <laughs> daily er, being down for a couple hours during the day would really shoot your business up. Uh, so maybe one would be a cable connection and the other would be a, um, uh, a T1 line or maybe you have fiber optic at, at, your, at your company so you totally want to get that if you can. Um, we also have some uh, uh, some hands raised, so let me go back to the poll thing. Let me close this poll, and uh, let's see. I don't know why I am not seeing the poll up there, but uh, so the poll is closed. I'm going to share. Seventy-five percent of you are uh, actually uh, using some sort of hosting now, so that's good. Which means. Uh, did I say 25? I meant 25 percent if I didn't say it that way. Oh well. <laughs> uh, so anyway, that means a lot of you are kind of looking at this, I'm going to assume. I've got a couple questions about that. Um, <clears throat> what are your biggest fears? You see that, I hope. Um, what are you or your client's biggest fears? fears about moving to a cloud-based solution. Uh, and this might be hosted, it might be SaaS, I wasn't able to get the question to be that specific, but just think for a minute, and you can change your vote, you can actually uh, vote for a couple of those. 
but you know, think for a minute. Really, where do you? What's the thing that might be holding people back? Cost seems high. Let's talk about cost a little bit, Casey, because cost is is definitely something to consider here. And truth be told, it is more expensive uh, on day one to take what I'm running in my office today with QuickBooks on my desktop and then hire Cloud9 real-time to start hosting it for us. So let's just go down that path a little bit, Casey. Yeah, absolutely. So again, there's two different environments. Our shared environment, uh, which is basically for five or less users of just QuickBooks hosting. All of the pricing is published on our website. We have a few different plans to choose from based on if you need it to integrate with other services, if you're wanting uh, private labeling features. So all of the pricing for our shared environment is on our website, cloud9realtime.com. The virtual servers are all custom built, so they all come with a custom proposal. Uh, it's not just cookie cutter environments, so therefore it's not cookie cutter pricing. We base the pricing on a virtual server environment on the number of users, uh, full list of applications, and how much data you have, because we don't ever charge monthly storage fees. We want you to know exactly what you're going to have to pay all year, so you know what to budget, and in turn what to charge your clients. So for a custom virtual server, we're going to ask you for a little bit of information. But to give you an example, um, it would be more expensive to just go from you know, what you're doing locally now if you're not looking to make any changes. But I have a lot of clients that come to me because their server is dying. They get a quote from their local IT guy that they've been dealing with for the last 10, 15 years. And it's $30,000 to for all the not only hardware, but also the labor, the licensing, everything that goes into it. And so $30,000 versus we can probably save them between 30 and 50%, so the upfront costs are much less. Um, it is going to be based, though, on what your users are going to need access to, how many users you have, because there are bulk license discounts, and we look at the full picture, build you a custom solution. So some people will need a SQL server as well as their application server. Some people want exchange services. So it all just depends on exactly what the, the full scope of the project looks like. Yeah. So as you can see, cost, I'm uh, glad you uh, kind of addressed that. Cost is what people uh, are afraid of. And um, it's the short-term cost versus the over the long-term cost. And in some cases, even the short-term cost is, is, is better this way. Um, but as a consultant to your clients, I just want to you know, emphasize start with what the client need is and then attack the client need and then go find the solution that does that best. It will be true that some clients maybe are going to stay on premise for a while. So uh, that's fine. Uh, you know, but as you start to help them do business anytime, anywhere with remote workers and all that stuff, you're going to probably involve one or more kind of cloud services. And so the cost shift will be happening for you. Also, notice security was kind of high there, because um, it's it's a it's a scared uh, we're all scared of it, you know, and and that's why I tried to address uh, up front. There's more robust security around your data when it's up in the Cloud9 servers than it is uh, on anybody's desktop. So, all right, now the next one is let's see, I guess what I need to do. I've got another one. About how many clients are you working with now? <clears throat> what percentage? Uh, oh, actually, what? How many clients do you have? We've got a very large audience in the room here, so uh, it help. It will help us all to kind of see, kind of, are we small business people or do we have larger clients? Lot, lots of clients, and uh, I'm just going to let that go for a little bit. So I'll close that and share that as well. So some of us have, you know, 28% of us have over 100 uh, clients. And um, so especially when you're trying to work with many, many clients, having that multiple data files or multiple uh, versions of QuickBooks on your desktop, I know how hard that is. And this is a real uh, solution for that, that kind of thing. One more poll, because I think this is good for everybody to see. Um, Let's just take a random data. By the end of 2013, what percentage of your clients do you think will be in the cloud? <clears throat> I 
Now, I, I, I'm going to assume that you have a, a role in this, meaning you're the consultant, the recommender. You may not be the total decision maker, and so we understand that. But just if you were to project, given what you know about your firm, your own firm internally, and then your clients, and what their likelihood of moving to the cloud would be, by the end of this year, just as a random date, what do you think that will be? So this will be interesting. I'm going to close the poll now because most people have, have registered that. This is very interesting to see. So you've got 64% uh, are saying basically between 1% and 20%. So that's a very low uh, adoption of the cloud. I'm going to be a little more bold and say it's, it's that, that, that more of you are going to see your clients using cloud stuff than you think. So, Casey, you can see the results on your screen, right? Absolutely. Because for some reason I cannot, and it's just the weirdest thing. Uh, okay, so that, that, it's just great, because when you get um, several hundred people all giving you their thoughts, this is what happens. And so if, you're, if you think you're in that 6% of 80, over 80% 80 uh, of your clients will be in the cloud, it's interesting to note that maybe your clients are really forward thinking. Um, and for the 7% of you that said none, <laughs> well, yeah, um, those clients, you know, maybe they're businesses that have been around forever and they don't, they're brick and mortar only. They don't really need to sell online or anything. I get it. Those guys aren't going to really listen to your why go to the cloud speech. So this is kind of what we have to do as, as consultants. Uh, one last one I'm just going to put up there. Um, if you want, um, Cloud9 to uh, contact you. Uh, just tell us, and then that will, uh, uh, you know, Casey will get right to you, or somebody. Hopefully, I, I hope I'm not commit, over committing you, Casey. But <laughs> you know, if you if you guys want somebody to follow up with you right away for more information, uh, then I just wanted to get your get your thing there. Um, <clears throat> all right. So, okay. Now let's go down the question list, Casey. We have about two more minutes. Uh, before we need to end here, I will close the poll. So um, there are a few people with their hands up. Uh, Claudette, if you have your speaker, or, yeah, a microphone, I'm going to unmute you. Claudette, are you there? Claudette. Claudette Blondin. I hear myself through your speaker, so you must have a microphone. Now she's saying, oh, no. I, I didn't mean to raise my hand. Thanks. Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> yeah. Oh, then mute yourself. Mute yourself now, because I've got you unmuted. <laughs> do you know how? <laughs> that might be able to do it. All right, and then uh, Jan Walker, are you are you there? Jan, if you can talk, talk. All right, I'll move on. Barbara Smith. We can hear you if you are there. Maybe they didn't really have questions. <laughs> All right, so there's other other ones. And do you see any uh, Casey in the questions that you particularly want to talk about? Um, well, I'd just like to answer kind of a general question that I see everybody keeps posting about specific apps. Um, if uh, I see one about medical billing, I, I see a few about proprietary softwares. Again, it's your own server. We don't limit what you can host. We just need to make sure it's compatible with our environment, which is Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, so we don't limit what you can or cannot host. Uh, you just tell us what you need, and then we'll look at system requirements and see if it's going to be compatible with our network if we don't already host it. If we already host it, we can just tell you yes or no. Um, another one that I see is, Questions about security and a few people with all this stuff in the news lately about NSA. Has anybody, the government, ever come and taken any of our documents? We've been around since 2000, and so far, knock on wood, not one, um, you know, subpoena or request from the government for any data or information from a client. Uh, if you are in Canada, I know we get a lot of questions. I was just at the AICPA conference last week, and there were a lot of Canadian clients there. They like to ask, you know, can I have my data on U.S. soil? 
absolutely we have the the writing and the link directly on the Canadian government website that will show you exactly what you need to disclose to your clients when you have data on US territory yeah and then um, so Rick Yale is is uh, both uh, since you have a question and your hand up I'm going to unmute you Rick why don't you talk about this question about in-house networks versus virtual network. Maybe you don't have a microphone. Rick Yale. All right, well, he posted a question. <clears throat> Can you discuss the cost of an in-house network versus a virtual network? And I think he means, if I'm going to build an in-house network here versus hire you, Casey, what are my cost differences? I mean, you kind of yeah. addressed it. Well. Um, you know, it all depends, again, on the size of your firm and what your needs are, what kind of applications you have, how fast you grow. You can plan on a typical server. The life cycle is about, we only have hardware for about three years. That's our life cycle. Um, I've heard of some firms pushing it to up to five years. Uh, but you just need to look at total cost, do a cost comparison, because it's going to be the hardware, the licensing fees, as well as IT support. It's not just the setup, but the maintenance of those servers. Uh, to, to go on for however many years, and then also on top of it, your backups. So there's a lot of different things, components that people don't think of, even such little things as like electricity and the space. Um, we just migrated a large client that had a few different offices, and they had an entire server room. And once they got onto the cloud, their electricity bill went down $800 a month, and that's just electricity. So they had so many different servers. I mean, they had 12 different machines for Exchange and SQL and application and databases. So you really just need to look at how big you are and what um, your costs are to build an infrastructure or keep one locally. We have firms as small as five users that, you know, a typical five user server with us is about $2,600 a year. And that includes not only your licensing and your hosting, but all of your technical support that you would normally need to get an IT person for. So let me be clear, our IT support only goes as far as the server and the data center level and does not extend into your local environment. We do not support your local printer scanners and PCs. Of course, we support you printing through the cloud and scanning into the cloud. But if we, during our troubleshooting we realize it's something locally where your scanner is broken or your printer is broken or your PC needs to have updates applied, that is going to be on you or your local IT guy. Yeah, and of course that makes sense. Here's one that's really, I think, comes up a lot. So if an office uses the desktop icon, does that mean the entire accounting office is in the cloud? And she's saying, this is Leslie Blaylock. Thank you, Leslie. Will accountants have both, uh, have both local software, for example, Excel, locally on their desktop and via the cloud? Um, so that's really up to the business. Most of our clients already have Office installed on their PCs, but they don't want to upgrade it every year. Some still have old as 2003 or 2007. Um, when you move to the cloud, if you co come with a virtual server, then it automatically, we're a partner of Microsoft, so with our SPLA, we automatically get you a full office license. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're very clear with your business um, and your users what goes into the cloud and what can be kept locally because you don't want to end up with two data sets by people get, you know, working on stuff locally. Most of my firms, they try it out at first with one or two things and then they move everything up because they get hooked and it's so easy. So then they just have everything up in the cloud and have dummy machines to uh, really just have internet connection and work in the cloud and they store everything in the cloud. They don't keep anything local. Yeah. So Leslie, my experience is that we did, like like Casey said, we already had, uh, you know, Office installed on all our PCs here, so we kept them. Um, the license for Office, the fees for buying Microsoft Offices, Office is included, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, but it's included in your hosting fees anyway. Isn't that true? Yeah, in a virtual server, the full office suite on our shared environment, it's just Word and Excel. Oh, okay. But on a virtual server, do you include licenses for office or not? Yes, for every user. Okay, so then if you're going to get a virtual server, which is what I want you to do anyway, and you've already got office on your local desktops, you're going to basically get another copy of Office for all your users up there in the cloud, but you can use Outlook locally or up in the cloud at whichever place you happen to be working at the time. Um, there might be reasons why you're doing 
you know, uh, Excel spreadsheets locally. Uh, I could I do that all the time. You know, I could go up there, but I, you know, I just switch back and forth. It's it's uh, it's fine. The key thing, Leslie, is your data. If you're working on client data and you're look wor working on it locally, just make sure you locate that data back up into the cloud. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna since you see my screen here, there's a cloud files icon that will get installed on your on your desktop and this cloud files will be a like another folder but it's something called remote app it just brings up a little windows explorer and i can copy files it's, it's launching i don't know hopefully my bandwidth will allow this um, uh, let's see it's over here here it is where is it there it's behind some windows in the, yeah, here it is. So here are my cloud files, right? This is actually my virtual server at Cloud9, but it looks just like another drive on my network. You know, so I can copy things back and forth to it, um, either from here over here. Or, you know, it's just like an extension of your local network. So if I had been lo working on a local spreadsheet here with my Excel, I can just save it, you know, local if I want and uh, I guess I'll put it on my desktop and book book one that is that so there's that little thing and I can just put it up into the cloud just by drag just by dragging well, I guess I gotta be within a folder why isn't this working help I can Copy. Yeah, try just the right click copy paste. I'm not sure why drag didn't work right there, but <clears throat> so that what that just did is that took my file on my local desktop and it drag it <laughs> I didn't drag it copied it up into the cloud and so now it's on the servers up. So that's kind of cool too. It's like an extension of your local area network. So feel free to work locally, but be careful not to put all your data local. All right, who's next? You see anything else, Casey? We should get to. We have a, about six more minutes. I was wrong. We we go to twelve till twelve fifteen. I thought it was only twelve. Have you successfully hosted Pro Series? Absolutely, lots of clients for about five years. We've been hosting Pro Series. Okay. <clears throat> Who has the license for the QuickBooks application? The accountant or the client? Great question. So because we are licensed by Intuit, each month we send them a report of all of our active users on the system that access QuickBooks. For each of those users, they need to have a valid QuickBooks license number associated with their account. Um, it, it doesn't matter if it's your license number or theirs. If you have a multi-user license number, then it can be assigned to multiple people, however many that has. So if you have a five-user you know, Premier Accountants Edition, you can assign that same number to five different people. We just need one valid license number per user. If you don't own QuickBooks, you can lease it uh, because we are licensed through Intuit. So we can lease Pro, Premier, Premier Accountants Edition, Enterprise, and POS. They do not lease out the industry-specific editions of QuickBooks like the, you know, wholesale and manufacturing, things like that. But all the others you can lease. It's about half the cost of buying it, and then you get a free upgrade to the latest edition each year. Okay, great. Here's one. <clears throat> if QuickBooks for the Mac is not available in a hosted application, do you have any ideas on how to collaborate with clients using QuickBooks for the Mac? Um, no, we just you need to just convert it to uh, the PC version and then you would just log in from a Mac computer but yeah. be working in the PC version. <laughs> Which, of course, is a non-starter for a lot of your Mac clients. So, Scott, thanks for the question because I, uh, I'm with you there. Uh, people who decided to use QuickBooks for the Mac have decided to do that and are, are you know, hell-bent on doing that. Uh, we cannot host that at something like Cloud9 because it's a Windows server. It's not a Mac server. Um, as far as I know, there is no Mac hosting company. So the best way to help that client is to get them to convert for the PC, but that may be a non-starter. So I don't know what else to say. It's just it is what it is, um, and uh, that's one of the reasons why we're we're kind of moving people over. 
or take that client, that QuickBooks client for the Mac client to QuickBooks Online. Maybe that's less uh, of a uh, of an allergic reaction, if you will, from the client. They they don't want to go to the PC, the Windows, but they might go to the, the to the web and go to QuickBooks Online. And there's several other online accounting options like zero or whatever. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> what is the main difference between Cloud9 and Right Networks? Uh, Doug, you want me to answer or? I think you should. Um, okay. Um, you know, I'll kind of chime in. Yeah, absolutely. So Right Networks is a great company. They've been around for a long time. They have um, definitely a, a solid platform. Their technology is very different than ours. They do VDIs, which are virtual desktop images. Because of that, it is a full shared environment. They are not custom-built virtual servers, so you have a lot more limitations on what you can access and host in their cloud. Um, they have a set list of applications that's available on their website. Anything out of that is just not available. You're going to have to go to somebody else. So um, that's the biggest difference, and then some of our private labeling. Uh, but you know the connection to um, you know they do mainly just RDP which we showed you the Windows desktop that's how you would always log in is through an RDP session not with them uh, we give a few different ways in terms of logging in and again we don't limit you in what you can host those are the biggest differences but both are licensed by QuickBooks both are reliable secure um, it's just more of which platform is a better fit for your company great well there are Probably a hundred questions left, but we're going to have to wrap here. Casey, I really appreciate your uh, your involvement today. I think you uh, gave us a lot of good information. Um, as as people may know, I've been working with uh, Cloud9 for I don't know, a good ten years now, eight years, uh, and you have done a lot to bring a lot of professionalism to the company and um, build a, a lot of uh, a really. I guess confidence in your users, and so I thank you for that. And you, since I'm a client, I, I'm kind of a uh, an evangelist now. Uh, <laughs> well, thank uh, you so much for having me, Doug. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, and the other hosting companies are great too. There, there isn't one out there that I would say don't use it. But uh, I, I do like what you guys are doing, and I think your your pricing and your policies are good, and uh, your support is really good. We didn't really get into support, but of course that is where it matters most. If I'm down, I need to be able to uh, find somebody to get it back up because I can't from here. Uh, and you guys have done a good job of that. So, oh, thank anyway, you. thanks all for your attendance today, and we will sign off here. And hope to see you somewhere, either in the cloud or in the flesh, sometime somewhere soon. Uh, before I sign off, I better ask Cheryl if there was one more uh, uh, piece that we needed to to uh, mention at the end. You still with us, Cheryl? Ah, oh, she went away. She's probably muted. You're muted. There she is. Now you're. Ah, uh, hi, Doug. Thanks for offering. Yeah, I did want to say that, that you know there were a lot of questions that weren't asked or that weren't answered. So uh, we will um, work with Cloud9 on getting you those answer answers. We'll also send you. Um, later today, we'll send you um, a link to the recorded webinar, and we'll let people know who won the raffle prizes. And again, the Super Sleater deal, you can call Cloud9, you can email Cloud9, or you can fill out the link, uh, which is also on our website under the Solutions tab, um, to go to Cloud9. Just be sure to tell them that um, the Sleater group sent you, and you'll get the 10% discount, um, as well as the um, a copy of Rob Chandler's book. And then Casey is also going to have her team follow up with everybody to send you a white paper. So thanks, everybody, for attending. We really appreciate it. OK, well, thanks all. We'll see you sometime somewhere soon. Thank you.